Hey everybody, I hope you're doing uh, just great today. Um, uh, I uh, got a, about uh, five requests, just like rapid fire, um, when I was talking about going to do uh, three uh, claim documentaries um, this, this, uh, th this coming week. And so um, I got the request, uh, I got I actually asked, you know, well, what, what's in your pack? Um, you know, the, the thing about the thing about my pack it, that 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 is not really a, a kind of a fair statement is that, you know, for for what we do, um, we, we actually do really it, it's it's part inspection, it's part documentary. And um, those are two kind of separate functions, but but they kind of work together. But 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 the interesting thing is, you know, I mean, I, I mean, it's all about photography, but the, the, the difference in the way we do that photography on the on the front end and the back end are, are pretty pretty pronounced so whereas you know a lot of people would go out and do a production a run and gun kind of production for example and they would do so with um with with only just a bare bones of things um just one pack it it is uh incredibly difficult to do that in the environment in which we do uh, large loss uh, claims documentaries and estimates um so this is going to be uh, a uh, just a what's in my pack, and in this case, the what's in my pack is going to be looking at two very large tornado damages and looking at one very large uh, uh, hotel for uh, water damages. Which will it'll include, you know, in each of those, it'll include exterior details and interior details. It'll include um, inspections of of the property as well as talking and interviewing. Um, all, all the all the stakeholders, everybody who was there, everybody who knows something about it, everybody who's fixed the problem or temporarily repaired the problem or seen it in its past or known anything about it. It will be truly a documentary of what happened and how it's it's going to be fixed. So let's roll that intro and let's get to it. Hey everybody, let's get started. Let's first start about start with what I know for sure, no matter what, we're always gonna take. First thing is this bad boy, Matterport camera. Uh, I think this one's name is Larry. Um, at any rate, this is a 3D camera. If you've seen anything about what I've done, this is, uh, we, we use this, I use this on everything I do. Um, you'll notice on the bottom of this, it has this called a DAC 60. Um, without this connector, it becomes incredibly difficult to connect it to your pan head um, tripod. And uh, so we, I usually leave it on here so that it's always, it's always together. Um, of course, we got just its, its power cord. It's gonna travel with it. Now, where am I gonna put this? I'm probably, speaking of Matterport, I got a buddy working with one and he's so, so confused. Um, where, are we gonna, where are we gonna put this? We're gonna put this in a, um, uh, it'll, it'll actually go in a, in a backpack because, well, it's just easier to carry in a backpack. But for travel, for the actual travel portion of it, it's gonna sit in, uh, I believe that yellow case you see back there, it'll actually ride in there along with some other components. Um, pretty resilient, but still pack, I pack it real well so that uh, when it hits the airlines, it doesn't get banged up too bad. Um, this one's been on probably 100 
50 to maybe 200 flights and never had a problem. Um, and so that's kind of first in the pack always. The, the, next, thing, the next thing we're going to do is um, we're, of course, going to have the camera I'm shooting on, which is going to be the uh, GH5. In, we also have a 7-inch uh, monitor on that GH5 so that uh, it can get uh, the, pull the best focus when we need to manually focus um, and see things uh, in an environment, which is the best way to see it to, to possess the best information. Um, right now, that's sitting on a monopod that always stays with me. I'll include a link down below. It is, it, uh, this monopod is probably... Yeah, probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it just it works so well. I just I don't go anywhere without it. Um, but uh, but in addition to that, I have a, a hand grip, a Movo, I believe, hand grip that I use on this that uh, leashes to my hand very well and gives me just absolute control with this camera with this excellent stabilization it has in it. And everybody bitches and moans about this crop factor and all this. Uh, the simple fact is, at the end of the day, uh, this camera produces... 120 frames per second at 1080p that is buttery smooth and perfect it uh it grabs uh good photographs uh with the right with the right glass on it um and just knowing the camera you can make it do a lot of things all things being equal um there are some things that i will eventually add to my pack that i just haven't yet because well frankly i have to do this like seven times for everybody so it's a little different kind of a conversation with me but um, but uh, it, it's just it, it, it's a workhorse, and that is always going to be part of my pack. In fact, I don't think I ever leave my home, my office, my anything without that pack because it's so so primary to me. Um, we're going to also, um, in this case, just sticking with cameras. We're going to also I'm going to have this uh, small FLIR one thermal camera. If it's in the iPad or it fits in the iPhone, they also make one for Android. Um, this uses some very good tech that's already involved, already working inside of the iOS, um, and it produces some pretty darn good, uh, reasonably close, um, brief thermal imagery. Um, really do, really do like th that it's so small and it can go anywhere, and it, it just for when we need to look inside a wall and see what's going on. This is a it's a good it's a good start um, the um, moving on com continue with the cameras we're gonna bring always and forever the uh, C 100 the Canon C 100 um, what what we normally do with this this camera when we are uh, doing the uh, documentaries um, this is the camera we will normally do um, all of the uh, interviews with uh, because we, it has such a good way to handle uh, low light. Um, it also having great ports for control of, of, of audio so we don't have to do any post-processing on the audio is great. See, when we do those, those interviews, those interviews have to be spot on because there's no way we're going to get them again. They're, Everything that needs to be said and captured needs to be said and captured in a way that we will always be able to just knock it out. And this is uh, such, a, such a vital tool. Um, this is not by any means the newest model of uh, the C-Series, but um, I tell you what, uh, just, just, couldn't say, just couldn't say enough good about it. Um, you know, the, the best thing I probably like about it is it's, um, that it has... It has these uh, variable NDs right there on the side. It uh, lets you do zebra peaking and um, just just a host of other functions right there, right there on camera. And uh, and besides that, if you do just need to handle it, uh, it's a very comfortable cam camera to handle. I think that's some stuff I need. I'll be right back. You know, um, it, it never. Never fails, you know, when I'm getting ready to go out on one of these trips. I'm always having to get something else for the trip. Um, these happen to be these uh, these batteries for the 
for the um, GH5. Oh. Be quiet. And also, um, this uh, this it's it's a it's a power it's a power cord uh, for the charging of these, which uh, lets you do it over, um, you know, with 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 any kind of standard iPhone uh, adapter or whatever, and that's 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 cool. Because you know more batteries. Um, the battery on uh, this baby though, um, I I I don't think I ever killed this battery. Um, look at the size of this sucker. It uh, takes a while to charge, but, well, you think. Look at that. Nice battery. Does an incredible job. But anyway, the C100 is going, going, going with. Um, in addition to that, uh, just a few odds and ends. We're um, going to bring the Joby. Uh, just for when we need to set the camera somewhere. Um, we'll do it on either, either or both of these cameras. Um, sometimes it's just for good perspective and sometimes it's because we need to walk with it without being gimbaled. Um, in addition to that, I'm gonna take this oldie but goodie, this Phoenix HM34, which it simply tells me what the relative humidity is and what the temperature is. And while it doesn't seem important, Sometimes in our documentaries, if we say it's 98 degrees in this building and the relative humidity is 76 or 86 or whatever, it says, hey, it's wet and it's hot and it's miserable and it's causing damage. And so that's important. So then uh, we're also going to bring uh, this uh, Teffen uh, circular polarizer. Um, you know, just sometimes uh, the polarizer is the difference between getting a really good shot of damage and uh, and not. And of course, uh, we would not go anywhere in the world without uh, the Teffen uh, multi uh, ND, variable ND filter. Uh, just rocking good, I use it on the, the GH5. I don't have to use it on the C100, like I said. Um, we've got chargers, um, the lights we use, the... Uh, the, the lights we use, um, as well as uh, the, the monitor we use for the, that I'm looking at right now, they all use this, this particular battery, uh, which is 7.2 uh, uh, volt, uh, 7200 mAh. Um, this one's from Halcyon. Anyway, just uh, great batteries uh, to do lots of uh, good work. And um, we're always, I usually bring three or four of them and constantly keep them, uh, keep them charged. Um, these, you know, these are for Canon fins and, uh, and these. Hm. Thought I had some other ones. Okay, uh, and this is um, this is a KNF uh, high def um, filter. It's a variable ND for um, one of the one of the lenses, one of the Lumix lenses I have, which uh, hasn't been I haven't been able to filter. Um, the lights we're gonna use, we use them with some diffusers. Uh, these are, are surprisingly cheap, surprisingly good, and surprisingly. Um, we're able to diffuse them and, 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 and literally I bring about three of these lights in every pack that we have. Uh, they pack real well. They weigh just a pound or two. Uh, we'll also bring stands. They use standard stands and, uh, cor of course the diffusers, you can break those down really easy, but, uh, you know, this will work on a AC or it'll work on, work on these same, these same, uh, these same batteries. And, uh, it is, uh, you know, you can, you can decide whether you want, how you want light, you know, you can, you can warm it up, tone it down, whatever you want. It's very cool. Um, so we, we use those, those will come with me. Uh, got the Rode NT G3 uh, that I'm talking to you on now. It'll be in this bag along with the shorter cord and the longer cord that I'm using. Uh, we 
Usually we'll go ahead and bring a mic stand, but I may forego that this time. Um, we're of course, uh, I've got a, uh, it's not by Zomi, but I, I have a battery pack where I can uh, plug this into a, uh, you know, just a remote battery pack or, um, or I can plug it into a two, two, one or two uh, wall jacks with the, with the USB. And I can run the uh, GH5 forever. Uh, we'll often do this when we're filming with it, uh, although we usually don't use it for the straight film camera. Um, we will also use that if I am doing uh, time lapses on uh, the structures that we're working on. This is a screwdriver. This may be the most important tool that I have in my chest. See this one? It flips. I can be Phillips or flathead. Most of the time it's flathead I need. But I will need this every single time I go out. You go, it lives in my bag. It lives with me all the time. I even carry it on the airplane and they don't seem to mind because it's a tool. They don't mind tools, they mind weapons. Um, I'm gonna bring this remote. It's just a basic remote, um, really inexpensive. I'll put the link to it, it's uh, JJC. Um, and uh, it just lets me remote, do long shutter and stuff like that with uh, the GH5. Really, really like that. Um, so if we just go ahead and stay with cameras, we'll go ahead and stay with the, uh, oh, you're heavy. uh, I'm going to go ahead on this trip. I'm just going to take, um, I'm going to take the, 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 uh, Phantom, Phantom 4. Um, it, it, it rides in this little case, which I can either, I can literally throw, I can literally check it if I want to. Um, or I may put it in another bag to carry it. I don't know, I've got several different ways I can carry this, but this was just the best way at the time. But I'm bringing this because we're not gonna be doing that much drone work. We're not gonna have to do thermal. Uh, we're not gonna have to do uh, huge, huge structures exterior, um, mostly because uh, we're gonna be able to physically get on those structures. And uh, we just need a few uh, cinematic shots uh, for, for perspective. And, uh, this was not a terribly expensive case, and it just is. Uh, we call it the, we call it the turtle. I don't know what its real name is. So, so that kind of covers all the cameras. Um, I am. You're you're looking at me on a uh, Rokinon 16 millimeter 2.8. Um, it's a good wide lens, even with the crop factor that uh, that's on. Um, it does. It's it's also got a, a EF mount. I've got it on a, on a um, oh Vitrolox uh, Vitrolox mount to, uh, converter. But um, I, I'm just always impressed with this particular lens. It's a good wide angle lens. Often use it when we're when we're doing inspections because you get a good perspective. Uh, you don't get a lot of that arcing that you would expect to have on a wider angle. I really like it. Um, that's definitely going to come with me. Um, I have here in my case, I have this uh, relatively inexpensive 420 to 800. Um, this thing was uh, basically, it's on, it's on an EF mount, so I'm basically putting it on, when I put it on the, the GH5, um, it's, it's just an extremely long reaching lens, uh, that has to be of course mounted. Um, this thing's so screwy cause it's, it's the way it's locks. It's, 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 it's crazy. Um, but surprisingly enough, when I have to get a detail that is so very far away, uh, that I cannot physically get to it, uh, we will use this. We probably pull this out maybe one every time, once every time, time that we go out. And it's not a primary, but whenever we absolutely positively have to get something that we can't get otherwise, we'll get it. And it will get a detail as long as we've got good light and as long as we are using a remote with the, uh, with the, with the um, camera because any shaking will just show up. Um, we're going to, of course, bring this. This is uh, the uh, Lumix uh, 25 millimeter. 
Um, this has got great, it's a micro four thirds. It's got great, uh, it's, it's great for autofocus. Um, it just does a good job of, uh, of, of just the color, the color that comes out of this when I run it on the GH4 is just excellent. And I mean, it's, it's not that expensive of a lens, but it works like a champ. Um, we're, we're going to bring the Lumix, Lumix 100 to 300. Um, this, this baby is, uh, a great autofocus with uh, stabilization. Um, it is, uh, uh, it's a, uh, I just, I, it's 100 to 300. I can't, I can't say good enough things about it. Um, I gave this thing a test. I haven't had it very long. I gave this thing a test the other day and uh, tried to just run and gun and just catch things that I could not pull focus on on a normal condition. Things that were moving fast, things that were I would normally be out of focus on things that other things just hadn't caught up with. Uh, a kid running uh, with a skateboard, a um, motorcyclist, a uh, car moving fast, some people uh, doing jump rope, um, just um, lots of stuff. And, and, and he caught a bird or two and th this thing just click, done. It was a, such good quality. And um, yeah, I just can't say enough about it. That's definitely gonna go with us. Um, this, this lens um, is just good for uh, backing up and just being able to pull close and grab your detail, pull gross and grab your, de grab your detail. Um, this right here is the uh, 16 millimeter 2.2 uh, Rokinon uh, Cine lens. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, you pick your aperture, it's got a declicked aperture and you pick your, uh, and, and you, you manual focus it. Uh, use this on a lot of interviews um, where we're not moving around a lot um, just because this pulls such good, uh, such good, beautiful pictures of, of, of what we're doing. I may not bring this just because it's one, it's, you know, it's two more pounds, but we're going to see. Um, this right here is the uh, Sigma, Sigma um, DC 17 to 50. 2.8. Um, this has image stabilization. Uh, the thing that I don't like about it, and I do like about it, is it's got a very short, you can hear that? See how short that is? It's just got a very short focus. Um, it is on the EF mount. Um, the GH5 does not love it, so I usually use it um, either on, I use it often on the C100. Um, and I use it often, I often on the, um, on the GH5, but uh, only when I'm gonna rack focus it and only whenever, uh, it, it just, this, this, this picture, it's just good glass. It has, it has just a good, it has just a good look to it. And so even though I don't love everything about the, the lens, it, 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 does, it does a great job. Uh, this is the um, Sigma, see, I'm so bad at that. I'm so bad, that's why I had to order more of them. Um, this is a, this is a, um, seven, 70 to 300, uh, normal and macro lens, um, with, uh, image stabilization. Um, I will almost always use this on the GH5 with, the with, with the Vitrolox and, uh, this produces some beautiful pictures, um, because of the way the crop works and everything, it's a, it's a much longer I can see a little farther than I see with, with this one by Lumix, but, uh, but this, this has produced some great pictures, some, some great stuff to be able to reach out, out and grab. Um, this is a lens that I take with me everywhere I go. It is a uh, Micro Four Thirds uh, Rokinon. Um, it is the uh, 35 millimeter 1.5. That's more like having a 50 millimeter on the on the um, the GH5. Um, it's got a declicked aperture. It's uh, it goes down. It's got the the stops down to 1.5. This is a great low light beast. It uh it does a great job. Uh, it's easy to focus. It is produces beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pictures. And I even though it's heavy, uh, it always goes because um, sometimes it's just the best thing to capture what we're after. Uh, even we'll even use this in some uh, in some interviews, pulling back a little bit, uh, or, or pulling up close for some some uh, intimacy. 
And then this is the this is the deal that I, I normally use. I, it, none of that's very exciting, but that is the glass that I normally use. There's a few other things, odds and ends I use that I don't have with me that I'm not gonna bring, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna bring all those lenses that I just showed you. Um, and, you know, the, the, thing, the thing I got, okay, I'm, I, am, I am a little perplexed, okay? As I told you going into this, um, we take a bunch of stuff that's different than just somebody who's just gonna go out and run and gun. Um, because it is a production, but it's a production that involves, you know, 3D camera, it, it involves, um, you know, with the iPad, um, you know, writing down some scope, doing some various things to, to assess the damage. Uh, we got to reference some documents that we get just on down the line. So let's talk about gimbals. We own pretty much every gimbal there is. Um, we've tested all of them. It's something I've always been in love with. We, we got all the drones. We've got the X5, the X7, the X3. We've got the um, Inspire 1, Inspire 2. Love, love the gimbals. Um, we've, we, we've handled everyone that's there and pretty much everyone that comes out. So I have this Ronin S. And, and it's fairly impressive. It's also fairly heavy, but it's, it's fairly impressive. It does a good job of, uh, you know, I can mount the C100 on it. I can mount the um, GH5 on it. GH5 is a little easier. Um, you know, I like that they, they made it where, where, I can see, where I can see the screen a little better. I like that they've got a better underswung mode. I like that they've got multiple modes. I like that there's a trigger. Um, I like that this is detachable and it's easier to pack. But this is the Ronin MX. And this has produced so much beautiful buttery footage. Beautiful. And at the end of the day, this is smaller and easier to handle just for getting it there. And this produces 60% better results every time. Because nothing that I found besides some, um, some stuff from uh, Freefly, Moby, that does anywhere close to it. So the problem is, is that if I do that, uh, I usually take, my, my, my normal is I take one bag, which is kind of a catch-all, um, I cap carry uh, just with odds and ends from the Matterport to the drone, maybe uh, just all pieces and parts that I'm gonna need, chargers, things like that. And I usually have another bag, which is gonna be lenses and, and maybe some other stuff. But, and then I, I usually will, I, I oftentimes lately have just been taking the Ronin S. Um, if I take the, uh, if I take the, the the Ronin MX, then I'm actually taking, um, you know, that'll bring me another bag. So that'll be three bags. And then that'll mean probably that this bag that I normally carry lenses in will probably go away and I'll have to heavy load uh, them in some other places, which is not the best practice, but it would work. So I got to come to a conclusion on that. And that's kind of unpopular because, you know, this is like the coolest thing out and everybody loves it. And I like it. It does some cool stuff just when I'm doing something that's very, very, very cinematic, I, I, I want to use the MX because it's just so beautiful. Anyway, I have talked to you far longer than I should. I got to get to it because I got to get packed. I got to be up in the morning and, and, and gone. I've got about 101 things I have to do in between here and there, including uh, some... Uh, you know, creature kind of things I have to do, like for the wife and whatnot. Um, incidentally, I'll clean everything before it actually goes to the in the in the in the pack, so it'll be 100% go when it's ready to go, when it's ready to hit. So, I hope that you are out there and you are recognizing that uh, whatever you do in life, um, whether it feels like it or not, uh, where the magic really happens is where you treat it as art, where you do it better, different, more true to yourself. 
Thanks for being here and thanks for uh, taking a ride on my large lost life. I'll be showing you some stuff in the field. Um, I've got to have surgery on my sinuses. At least they say I have to later this month. So um, I am really running and gunning to get done some of the things that I need to do. So have a great day. I'll see you on the next episode.